if you are here in the room or you're joining us online, we are really glad that you are worshiping with us today at the Grove. I'm Charlie Lofton, uh, the lead pastor here, and you've caught us. We are near the end of a series that we are doing through on the commands of Jesus, and we started with this verse in John 14 where Jesus says, hey, it's the one who has my commandments and keeps them is the one that loves me. And then I'll respond with love. The Father will respond with love. It will disclose ourselves to you. It's like revelation and connection comes from obedience. And so we spent the last few weeks just kind of looking at uh, some of these. We looked at the, the very first command that Jesus gave, the ones that he says were the greatest commands. We looked at one that's very, very difficult, uh, love your enemies. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. We talked about some of his commands about prayer last week. And today we're going to be talking about one of these that is, I don't know if controversial is the right word, abused, misused, misunderstood. We're going to talk about the passage where Jesus says to not judge other people. And I think people really have a a lot of different misunderstandings about that. We'll just kind of let you know a little uh, behind the scenes, kind of how my brain works. Okay, anytime I'm about to, to preach a message, like I try to most weeks start with an intro that kind of is on the theme. Usually it's like some way that I've experienced this this week. Maybe I've done it or I've seen it or whatever. And, and when you're talking about having a judgmental attitude and like, hey, I think I'm going to share a story about maybe when I had a judgmental attitude. The great thing is, man, the world is, I mean, is always giving you opportunities. I mean, it's, like, it's not like you're sitting around like, hey, there's nothing going on anywhere. Anybody have a judgmental heart? So then you have to decide, do you go with your best story, your most recent story? So we'll just go most recent which is this morning. That's how, that's, that's how, that's how long it took, right? That's, that's the gap. So I'm there at a uh, local uh, eating establishment. You can, this place, you can pre-order on the app. Pre-order on the app. This is what I want. And they'll bring it, they'll bring it right to your table. You put it in your table number, boop, 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 they'll bring it, bring it right to your table. Well, you know, it was very apparent after maybe two or three minutes, I was like, probably probably not going to happen. These people came in after me, and they ordered, they got their food. Like, I don't think they're bringing it to the table. So then I got up there and just kind of stood there at, at, the, at, the, at the carryout, just waited, 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 waited. Finally, somebody was like, what? Um, and I was like, hey, did you get this mobile order? Yeah, it was sitting, and it was sitting right here, and they just, they just grabbed it. And I was like, and he's like, well, how, how, how long has it been sitting there? I was like, yeah, and I also had a large drink. So he hands me a medium cup. And I'm like, is that a large cup? And he gave me a look, and the only real way to describe the look is to use a bad word. But the look that he gave me told me he didn't want me to go someplace, right? You need, you need to go somewhere. And he, he, shows me, he shoots me this look. It's like, I guess I can get you a large cup. And then just turned around and just kind of threw it, like nowhere, just like threw it. And then and goes and gets it to me, goes, you can come bring it back to me. So, now, now the question is, what, what's happening in my heart in this moment? And at what point in this am I ex- demonstrating a judgmental attitude? So I think I can, with a clear conscience, look at you and say, I received bad service this morning. Right? I mean, we can all agree on that. But like, that's not, I, mean, I did. I, re- I received bad service. But I'm trying. I'm trying to hide um, where I was. Some of you already know because it's where you always go. Some of you are trying to make deductions based on places that you can order on the app and they'll bring it to your table, which is, that's your problem, not mine. I'm trying, I'm trying, I was like, but like, here's the thing, what do, what do I know? I, I know at this very narrow window, I received bad service. I have no idea what's going on in that guy's life, not one thing. Is this the job he wants? Is he happy here? What happened to him last night? How early did he have to set his alarm? How many people were supposed to be at work today that aren't? What, what, what is going on in this guy's real life? Not in this 15 to 30 second interaction that I had with him. What is going on with him? But I think too often we just kind of go with jerk. And, and, it's like, okay, and you're thinking like, where, where can I go online to write a scathing review about this? I need to get these people in trouble. And then maybe you're more crafty. You're like, I'm only going to sit and say if I think I can get free stuff back. I'm not going to waste my time with all the review. I'm not going to get something back, right? It's like, it, our brain just goes to very negative places with people pretty quickly on very short interactions. We'll bring it a little bit closer to home, maybe, for, for some of us. We'll just make it a little more current. Uh, because I'm feeling a little saucy, we'll just, we'll just bring masks right back into it. 
So you're at a place, and there's hundreds of people there. It's this event, and the masks are required. There's signs out there. They're giving out masks. There's hundreds of people there. Everybody's wearing a mask except one guy. He's just not. He was asked. He said, no, he's not wearing one. What do you know about him? What do you know? You're walking your neighborhood, and you see a nice lady. She's out in her front yard outside by herself, and she is wearing a mask. What do you think about her? One of those two is probably somebody that is, or both, maybe if you're sitting on the circle outside saying people are just ridiculous in general. One of those is kind of like a trigger for you in some way. What do you know? Like what you see is like he's not wearing it. Why, why is she wearing it? What do you know? All you know in that moment is what they're doing. Does your brain go to, oh man, that guy's not, that guy's not wearing a mask. I wonder what breathing condition he has. He probably has some severe asthma of some kind. And that asthma is really keeping him from being like, I, sh- I, should, I should pray for him. This poor guy who is in this, in this place. Is that where your brain goes? Oh, this poor woman. What, what is going on in her heart? How, 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 how infected must she be and how scared and, and, and pre-existing conditions she has where she feels like she even needs to do this outside by herself. I should... I should pray for them. This guy was, was really rude to me at a restaurant this morning. It probably means there's something going on in his real life. I should pray for him. Well, that person really seems to be in a hurry. And the way that they're driving is really crazy. And they just kind of jerked right there in front of me. Man, I hope everything's okay with him. I need to pray for him. Man, I hope you get there safe in whatever great emergency you're going to. Let me just let me just slow down and back off. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to get on your tail. I don't. I don't, let me, I'm just going to get out of the way because clearly you're going through something, and I want to be empathetic. No, we 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 see something, and you know, you just you just know, and you you've crafted a story, and somewhere in there, we have. We have gone against this incredible principle that I think that Jesus has for us. But again, I think the way that we talk about it, to not be a judgmental person, to not judge other people, I think we misunderstand what Jesus is talking about. And often we don't know where the line is, what is or is not judging. So that's what we're going to talk about. But first, of course, we'll go to the passage in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. What Jesus is saying here is like you don't want to judge, you don't judge people, or that judgment's going to come back around on you. And the way that you judge people, that's how you're going to get judged. And the measure you use, the standard that you use of judgment, that's going to come back on you. And we'll talk in a little bit about exactly what we think that Jesus means by that. And then he uses one of the most ridiculous metaphors that in, in the Gospels. And Jesus, he's great at really weird, weird metaphors. And I love it because I like a bad metaphor too. He's like, you're sitting there looking at somebody, and you're like, and then obviously you're you're in the lumber industry, and somehow, and you're and you're a carpenter, or whatever, you're 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 cutting you're cutting planks of wood, and you look at somebody, he's like, hey, you got a little, you got a little, you got a little, you got a little thing. And he's like, how can you do that when you've got a whole plank sticking out of your own eye? Like, bro, like who's walking around with a giant? Like, no one's walking around with a giant plank in their eye. I mean, I think I mean, like that's a really bad carpenter. Like if you've got a giant, just like a giant two by four sticking out of your, like one, how did it get there? And anyways, but the, but the, but 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 the idea of this is when Jesus uses really weird, exaggerated metaphors. There's a point that he's trying to make between the sin that you think you see in someone else and the reality of the sin that is that is in you. So again, we're going to talk about this a little bit more. And then Jesus says, hey, listen, you, you deal with this. You deal with this giant two-by-four that you have. You, you deal with that, and then you can come in there 
and clean out the spot. And again, with all these things that Jesus is saying, I think there's a lot of room here for misunderstanding, but I think for a lot of us, it begins with this simple principle, is that we need a better definition of the word judge. So when you talk about this, and we're, a lot of us are familiar with this passage, most of us probably knew, I'd heard, I'd heard this somewhere before, maybe we've heard it, we didn't know it was from the Bible, but we've heard this principle, don't judge or you're going to be judged. Most people, when they know old things like this, they know it in, um, in King James, and they don't know it, you, like, lest ye be, right? J- j- don't judge, lest ye be judged, right? We just, this, this idea of don't judge or you're going to be judged. And I don't think that we've got a great definition of this, though, even though we're familiar with it. Because very often what happens is, like, like we're friends and we're out, I mean, we're couples and we're, we're hanging out, and then you, know, you say something terrible to your wife, or you start yelling at your kids in an inappropriate way. And I'm like, man, hey, bro, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk like that to your wife. Man, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't talk like that, with, like that with your kids. Man, don't judge me. Only God is my judge. I'm like, I'm not not judging you. I'm just saying that's not it. Don't, don't, don't do that. You know, see somebody be dishonest at work. Man, don't, don't, don't be dishonest. You can't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't judge. You can't judge. God's the judge. Well, I mean, no. You can't do that. And, And and if what Jesus is saying is here is we do not have the ability, like you have the right to quote this verse, kind of wear it like a like a chain around your neck that says, you can't get involved in my life. You can't correct me in anything because Jesus said this. Then very much of the New Testament gets thrown out, including what Jesus said. Because Jesus said this function that we play in each other's lives of being like, hey, this behavior, this thing that you're doing, it's not good. You shouldn't do that. You need to stop. How can I help you? Don't, don't, don't. That this sort of loving engagement and involvement is like, I care enough to see what you're doing, and I want you to stop for your sake, for your family's sake, for, for, for your friend's sake. You, you, you need to get out of this dangerous pattern. You need to stop doing this. Don't do that. This is what Jesus has called us to do and to be in each other's lives. So do not think that this is a get out of jail free for your own perfectionism where you feel like you can now barricade yourself around this where no one has the right to point out to you that you're not as perfect as you wish you were. That's not what this is saying. Now, some of you are, if not physically nodding along with that, are emotionally nodding along with that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I'm, I, that's what I've been telling you for a long time. I'm just, I, I'm telling you all the time. I'm always telling you like, hey, man, you need to stop that. What's wrong with you? You're an idiot. And he's like, don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you. I got things I got to tell you. I'm just saying, I'm just asking questions. I'm just pointing some things out. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. Can we just agree on this? That if in order to defend your behavior, when you explain it to somebody, you say, I was just, can we just all agree that you're lying? Man, I'm just asking questions, bro. You ain't just asking questions. That might have been phrased as a question, but you ain't just asking questions. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. No, you're not just saying. You are saying, but you ain't, you're not just saying. You've got, you've got an agenda, you've got an axe to grind, there's a, there's a deeper accusation there to be made, there's a character judgment of some kind that you need to make. Sometimes we think that we can, that, that, well, because Jesus says we can get involved in people's lives, that the manner in which I do it, the thing that I say and how I say it, the attitude that I have, the way that I think about you, none of that matters because Jesus says we're supposed to correct each other. And it's not judging if it's true. I'm just telling you the truth. It may be true, but that's not just what you're doing. And so, somewhere between these, right, there's, there's an idea of judgment. And, 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 and we, we cross this line from, I am seeing something in your life that I hope that you can do better at. There's something that you need to stop doing or start doing. And to this attitude, this judgmental attitude. So how, how, do, we, how do we know that we're getting there? And so I think it's important, because this is what Jesus says. Hey, you want to make sure that the way that you're interacting with people, whatever that is, it's going to turn around on you. So if that's not what you want for you, you shouldn't give that out. And so if you're looking at people, and this is what we do, I can tell whether or not someone is a Christian by if they blank. I can tell if someone is a Christian by if they don't this. 
that your ability to tell whether or not someone is a genuine follower of Christ is based on your assessment of their behavior. If that's the case, then what you're saying is, is that I can determine someone's connection with God based on works. Now, is that how you want to be judged? Or do you want to be judged based on the gospel that says that, that it is by only by the grace of God and the sacrifice of Jesus that I have a connection with God? I'm not going to judge people based on the way I don't want to be judged. But I, 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 can't, I, can't stand, I can't stand up to that. But then here's what people do. Well, I mean, here's what I'm doing, though. I don't commit that sin. So I'm fine being judged because I'm only judging people based on whether they commit this, this, this particular sin. And I don't commit that particular sin, so it's okay. And really, it's usually a sexual sin. I didn't commit that. I don't commit that particular sexual sin. Because people that commit that one, there's, there's definitely something wrong. Sure, I do this, but we all struggle with this, right? This is, this is what we talk about in accountability. But I don't do that. And we think that we can get away with this. Because I don't do this one thing. This thing that I've decided is this standard. This one act, doing it or not, doing, doing this wrong thing or not doing this good thing, that is the standard. And we think that we can get away with that. But the reality of it is, once we switch to this works-based mindset, that someone's status with God can be t- determined by what they do, you've got a problem. And even if we take that out of us, and I, mean, I understand the gospel well enough to know that that's not true. But we do this where we say that I can determine someone's value, though. I can determine whether or not someone is a good person based on a certain set of, care, of, of, of observable behavior, things that they do. And again, that's the judgment that comes back on you. Because the reality of it is, that probably is most likely coming from a dark internal place in you. You know or you believe or you think that the world judges you this way. You are judging yourself this way. You are not perfect. You know you're not perfect. You know you're supposed to be perfect. And the best way to get this out is to point out how worse not perfect you are. And the more I can talk about that, the less judgmental I feel about my own self. And the less I can keep you at bay from really figuring out what's really going on in me. But the best way to actually deal with this internal struggle with we have, that my value is determined based on how good I am, how close to perfect I am, is not to bring a judgmental attitude, but to have this completely different attitude that Jesus is talking about. And I think the way, again, to, to help us understand this, I think it's important for us to understand this, that we, we, don't, we don't want to pretend to know more than you can know. Don't pretend to know more than you can know. So I see you. I see you do something. And that thing is wrong. And I see that. And that is what I know. You did something you shouldn't have. I received bad service today. This person nearly crashed me on the interstate today. You know, I I, I see it. My, my spouse, my kids, my parents, my friends, he said something to me that was hurtful. That's, that's what I know. And I think the problem comes for us is, is we begin to think that I can, I can draw conclusions about someone based on simply what I observe. And a, and a big one for this has to do with money. I think money... You see, I think money and sex just kind of just kind of keep c- coming up because these are the two things that we really struggle with. I, th- I think I think this attitude comes out of us when we see people around the issue of money. I'll give you a couple of examples. You're driving, you get to a stoplight, and there's someone there with a with a makeshift sign that they have made, and they are in some sort of condition, and they are asking for money. And there are a lot of us that you think you look at that based on the fact that they're asking for money. The look in their eye, their teeth, their vibe. You think that you can put a story together based on a simple observation of them at a street corner asking for money. When you don't know anything about them, you don't know how they got there. 
You don't know what their life was like. You don't know what their childhood was like. You don't know what their parents were like. You don't know what the last three years are like. You don't know what abuse they've, they've suffered. You don't know anything about them except at this moment in their life, they're asking for money. That you think in that moment, you can very easily put together a, a life story that makes them worthy or unworthy, not only of just your financial support, but of financial support in general. But it's not just this end of the financial spectrum. It's this one too. Let's say that someone has a car that is worth more than everything else that you own. Or you have a home, that someone you know has a home where two or three of your homes could fit in their home. And you see them driving around their fancy car and their big old house and they got that office and they go on vacations and they do this. And you know, you know all, you just know, don't you? You know. There's lots of things you know about them. About how they got there and what their attitude is and what they think about you. And they need to be brought down a level. There's something, something just, I don't know what it is. It's just not, it's just not right. It doesn't really matter what that mo- amount of money is. It's just the amount of money relative to your money. And there's just a certain amount that some people have that's just not right. And you think you know. You think you can craft a story of someone's life based on very simple observations that you don't know. But this is what we do. We do this all the time. We do it with people with money. We do it with people with sex. We do it with um, uh, people with pe- people with money, people in traffic. We do it with our friends. We do it with our family. We do it with strangers at Walmart with crying children. Now, who's on that team? Now, you're sitting there minding your business. All of a sudden, you hear some kid screaming their head off at Walmart. You're like, mm-hmm. Bad parent alert. We, we all thought that until, we, until it was us. Until, 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 it was me, until it was me. Until all of a sudden it was my kid. And it's like, you don't understand. You, and, and in your brain, you're like, you're embarrassed, right? Because you know all of the extenuating circumstances and the things and this and this. And you've been sick and we've been this and this and this. And it's, it's not. I'm like, we, we, never, we never do that. You've got all these things. But in that moment, that's not what you think about them. And this is what spec log is all about. You've got a, he's a spe- and, and I've got a plank coming out of my eye. All I see is the very surface of what is going on with you. But the reality is I've got a giant plank coming out of my eye. I know a lot more. I know this much about your sin. I know this much about mine. But even though I know this much about the sin and the darkness and everything that's going on with me, and I only know this about you, I'm giving myself all sorts of reasons and excuses and understand. Hey, you just got to understand. You got to understand. You got to understand. It's all, 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 all. But, but you, do you, do you, not, you don't even, you don't even see. It. It's like, no, no, no. Right there, right there, right there. Yeah. Mm. And then I can determine, I can write a story based on a very small amount. But every now and then you may find out a little bit more. And you find out that that person really is that type of person. They really are that type of person. Found out a little bit more, talked to them a little bit more, found out, found out they are. They are that thing that I don't like, that's not right. Still, do you now still then get to judge? It's like, well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know, but then I asked a couple of questions and then I found out, yeah, that person was, is in fact a druggie. So, so what? So what? Now what position do you find yourself in? And we'll say it this way. This is the position you need to find yourself in. You find yourself in this. You do not make character or spiritual judgments based on limited observations. You just don't. Even if they confirm some of your worst fears that they, I can't believe they believe that. I can't believe they do that. I can't believe this is true about them. Do you then get to decide someone's value? It is now up to me to determine someone's value based on my perception of their belief system, my perception of their actions, my perception of just what I see, what I know from very limited... Do I get... Is that my job? Is it my job to determine whether or not someone is in good standing with God or is a good person or not based on my limited observations? There are a lot of us out there that really do believe that this is our job. 
I had someone verbalize this to me once. I feel like God has given me the spiritual gift of rebuking. That God is just always putting on my heart. God's always putting it on my heart. The flaws and sins of other people. I just see it all the time. I'm interacting with somebody. God puts it on my heart. That person's bad at this. You need to tell them. That person's bad at this. You need to tell them. I just feel like this is a spiritual gift. I know it's not in the Bible that it's a spiritual gift. I believe it's my spiritual gift. And I don't think there are many of us that are that bold to say it in that way. But let's just be honest. There are a lot of us here who may not say it's our spiritual gift. We might even say it, be honest, it's our mission. It's on my mission statement to let people know how much they've disappointed me. To let people know what failures they are. And this is what Jesus says when he's, again, he's talking about the, the, the log and the plank. You see this and you feel like it's your job. Okay, if you think it's your job, you think it's your job. It's my job to look at you and fix. I, it's my job to fix sin. This is what Jesus says. If your goal is to get rid of sin, then focus on you. Focus on yourself. This is what Jesus says. If, if, you, if your goal, if this is what your goal is, so he says, you, you're looking at that speck. Like, and you think, it's my job. It's my job. It's my calling to get rid of everything that I see in you. So you got to, if your heart says, I need to get rid of sin, you need to focus on yourself. You worry about that giant plank that is coming out of your own eye. You deal with that first. Because again, all I know about you is a very limited amount of what I see. And I want to obsess about that when really, if I'm going to be honest, what do I know about my own sin? About how deep it is. About how dark it is. About how significant it is. That is, that is several two-by-fours worth of what's going on. This is what I know about me. So stop obsessing about these little things that you think that you know about someone else. And focus on these things that you know about you. And there's a lot of us, man, they, they think that what Jesus is portraying here is possible. This is what he says. Okay, okay, okay. And so then, once you've cleared the log, the, the plank out of your eye, then you can see clearly and then you can start messing with other people. And so we think, well, that's my goal then. It's my goal. And it's interesting that we would approach it that way at all. It's my goal. Because my goal is it's really important to me that I want to start m- m- criticizing other people. So the way that I do that first is I've got to get rid of the plank that's coming out of my own eye. So gee, okay, in order to do that, all you have to do is rid yourself of all the known external and internal sin that is going on with you. Once you've gotten rid of all of your sin, then you will now be in a position where you can say, there's something wrong with you, which you're never going to be able to do. So then where does that leave us? It seems like we're back to something that I, I, I said we're definitely not saying at the beginning which then is that we don't have the right to come at each other and say, hey, bro, you should consider not doing that. Hey, that's not good. You shouldn't talk to your wife that way. You shouldn't talk to your kids that way. You shouldn't steal. That's stealing. That's lying. No, man, don't do that. This is what Jesus wants us to do. But he wants us to do it with an attitude that says, here's the thing that I recognize, that I am a huge sinner with the giant planks coming out of my eyes. And the only way that I make it is by the grace and kindness of God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And when I see you, what limited things I see, I see the same thing. I see someone whose sin is getting the best of them and is in desperate need of the life and grace of God that comes through Jesus Christ. Because in the end, the kind of judgment that I put out there that I want to come back on me, that's what I want. I want us all to view one another as people on a journey together. And then we're not with God. We're not good people because of what we've done. We are humble sinners enjoying the grace and forgiveness and love of Jesus Christ. This is not a call to a lack of involvement 
but a different sort of attitude, an attitude of partnership, a part an, a, of, of empathy, of kindness, that even if your sin is foreign to me, even if your sin is very frustrating to me, even if your sin feels personal to me, even if it is the thing or on the list of things that I've decided are the worst things, because of what I know about me, I can only be gracious and kind with you. Let's pray.